This episode was brought to you by My Extraordinary Productions, now offering script coverage services. Have a professional look at your script before someone rejects it. A lot of writers have had this experience where they have finished their manuscript and it is perfect and they put it in an envelope and they take it to the post office and then three weeks later the envelope comes back unopened and the first thing they say is why didn't this person read my script so the first question is who are they who are these people who didn't read your script now if your friend didn't read your script it is possible that your friend is just terrible and selfish and it's also possible that your script is so bad that your friend read three pages and just said you know what i'm just not gonna continue with this but much more of the time what happens is that you have a very optimistic friend who thinks they can fit everything in their schedule and you just have to gently remind them hey i sent you my script a month ago did you ever get a chance to read it and hopefully they will either politely say i'm not going to get around to it sorry let me know if i can help with something else or they'll politely say oh i totally forgot about that let me get to it right now i'll give you some feedback by the end of the weekend now that's your friend but why wouldn't an agent or a manager or a producer read your script first of all these people don't necessarily know you so there's no obligation scripts have to be sent through the proper channels to have a shot at being read and even then it may not go directly to the person you want to have read it it may go to an assistant or an intern first but i'll get to that in a little bit if a script doesn't go through the proper channels it just becomes a lot easier for these people to get sued later on and a lot of them don't want to go to court if you were to write an episode of ncis that blends seamlessly with what the show already has going on and you send it to an agent and then Four weeks later, you see your episode of NCIS on TV, your first reaction may be, these people stole my script, even though this agent may have nothing to do with the NCIS office. On top of that, getting anything produced does take time. So that episode that you saw on TV, in order to get an episode of anything produced, it has to be written, which takes however much time it takes. Uh, someone has to produce it, which means setting up the shoot dates and everything and filling out all the paperwork and going through all the casting, which takes however long it takes. We have to find the right locations. We have to edit everything together. And then after all that, it can go through the pipeline and be aired on television. This episode was already three quarters of the way done by the time this agent read your script. The reason an agent, a manager, a producer, any sort of gatekeeper would send you your script back completely unopened, completely unread, is to protect themselves from lawsuits. If they never opened the envelope, they didn't read the script. If they didn't read the script, they didn't infringe on your copyright. You can't sue someone for coincidentally coming up with the same storyline as you, especially if they did it three months ago. Now this is a little bit of a downer. Even if you go through the proper channels, you still may not have the correct people read your script because the correct people may be super busy and they may decide to delegate all of the script reading to an assistant or an intern. And that intern has to think your script is good enough to give it to their supervisor before they give it to their supervisor. The intern has their own interests to protect. Now you may be wondering, why didn't the intern read the script? Well, I used to be the script coverage intern for a couple of places, and I made a couple of videos on the topic. Honestly, the thing that made me instantaneously refuse to read a script was if it was not formatted properly. It's hard enough reading a script that is formatted properly just because you have such a volume of scripts to get through as an intern. But if a script is improperly formatted, one, it's more work to just read and understand what's going on. But two, the vast majority of the time, the content is just also subpar. If you'd like to learn how to format your scripts, be sure to watch this video on the topic. This brings us to the next point. Maybe the script coverage intern started your script and couldn't get through 10 pages. What would stop them from getting through the 10 pages? Well, the most obvious answer is that maybe your script just isn't very good, but it's also possible that your script is fine, it's just completely the wrong brand. Something that would work for Comedy Central would not work on Disney and vice versa. Now, one thing that often happened when I was able to make it through the 10 pages was that I was actually able to finish a lot of scripts, but I kept thinking, 
this is such a formulaic story. I already know what's going to happen. I've seen this done a hundred times before. And because there was no nuance, nothing interesting or new or different about this script, nothing that could make it stand out, I didn't have a reason to send it to anyone who was higher up on the food chain than me. A lot of people who hire assistants and interns often feel obligated to give these people something to do constantly to justify their being there. So sometimes your script is just busy work. Sorry. And sometimes your script is brilliant, but there's a conflict. Maybe you wrote an amazing script with a unique story, and this other person wrote a very similar storyline, and it's at least as high a caliber as yours, but that person is already represented by this agency, or that person is already connected to this producer somehow. Now, some of these scenarios, the intern actually did read your script. It's just that a lot of us have this habit of interpreting no response as someone not reading something or someone not getting back to us, when it is possible that they did read it, they just didn't have a reason to send it to one of their superiors, or they didn't have a reason to give you feedback. Now here are a few things you can do to make your script a little more likely to be read by someone. First, you can find ways of networking with these gatekeepers. You know, depending on what's going on, there could be networking events you can go to. You can also find people on social media. You can also take classes. There are all sorts of ways of connecting with these gatekeepers. And once you connect with them, they're a little more likely to actually read your script and actually give you feedback on whatever you wrote. Another thing you can do is enter your scripts into contests. One, you're getting a bunch of people to read your script. Two, sometimes the prize is getting to network with some sort of top level executive or someone who can actually get your script produced. And three, even if you don't necessarily get directly connected to someone, you may end up with some laurels and other accolades that help your script seem like less of a risk to read. Finally, if you really want your script produced, you can hire someone like me to produce it for you. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Follow me on social media. If you have a question, leave a comment below, and I will see you all next time.